Hi everybody. Tonight we have, for the second week in a row, another scholar to talk about another group uh, related to the Gnostics. This is a very interesting group because they still exist today. So we're going to talk about the Mandaeans. Uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, I'm Father Tony Sylvia and Jonathan Stewart is joining me as my co-host. Hello Jonathan. Hello everybody. <laughs> Hello, and we are going to have an interesting conversation this evening about the Mandaeans, who are the uh, world's oldest surviving Gnostic uh, group. And to help us to talk about them, we have Dr. James McGrath, for, who is the Clarence L. Goodwin Chair of New Testament Language and Literature at Butler University. Did I get that all right? Yep, you got that right, and I wouldn't have been too worried even if you didn't. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. No, we like fancy titles around here. <laughs> anyway, thank you, James, for joining us, and uh, we're pretty excited to talk to you about the Mandaeans. So let's just jump right into it. Can you tell us who the Mandaeans are and where they came from and kind of their, their origin story, as it were? Yeah, well, what you said was a perfect introduction. In fact, I was going to hedge my bets because I don't like stepping on anyone's toes and say they're one of the few, if not indeed the only Gnostic group to survive all the way from ancient times down to the present day. Uh, but really, are, they are the only one, or they at least deserve pride of place. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, they're located in Mesopotamia, so pretty much where the modern day countries of Iran and Iraq meet one another. Uh, and that river region is important to them because rivers are important. Baptism is their uh, primary religious ritual. I wanted to avoid showing anything that might be perceived as disrespect towards other Gnostic groups. No, go ahead. We do right? it all the time. Uh, okay, well then, <laughs> uh, maybe I don't need to tread quite as carefully. But the Mandeans do stand out as having a continuous existence probably from at least the 3rd century down to the present. Uh, we'll talk later, I presume, about whether we might be able to trace their history back even further than that. And they clearly have precisely the kinds of beliefs and practices that are labeled Gnostic by scholars in the specific sense in which that term is used by scholars of religion. Yeah, um, I, I think that <clears throat> Well, on this show, anyway, we, we don't have any uh, kind of false assumptions about <laughs> the history of Gnosticism. Um, it is a, a varied and interesting uh, set of religion, uh, religious traditions. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, the Bandeans are really the only ones who can lay claim to continuous existence from antiquity. And, uh, you know, unless there's some really super secret group out there that's really good at hiding, <laughs> which th there might be, but who knows? We can't talk about them, though. They're secret. Yeah. <laughs> Well, secrecy is, has an important role in uh, yeah. Gnosticism, and so you never know. <laughs> That's true. Um, so uh, what, is the, um, what is the kind of belief system of the Mandaeans? What sets them apart from other uh, re religions of their region? Uh, well, Mesopotamia does have a long history of um, eclecticism and of uh, sharing, particularly among esoteric and mystical traditions. And so they have a lot of points of intersection with their neighbors. Uh, we could talk about points of intersection with uh, Zoroastrianism, with Judaism, with Christianity, with Islam. Mm -hmm. What sets them apart uh, are uh, the fact that they are uh, a Gnostic group. And of course, there were at least quasi-Gnostic groups you know, among the Christians, among the Jews. But this is quite distinctive in being a Gnostic group that in its present form isn't Jewish Gnosticism or Christian Gnosticism, although we might be able to trace them back in their origins mm -hmm. to one or the other. Uh, their, their interaction with uh, other groups, in fact, has defined them in interesting ways. Uh, we get them mentioned in the Quran under the label of Sabians. At least most scholars think that that's the group that the Quran was referring to. And Really, if you want to get a sense of the Mandeans, on the one hand, looking at what they do is important. And baptism is not a one-time ritual the way it is in Christianity. It's a repeated ritual. Um, this immersion is something that they practice, and they carry it out in running water, which in Mandaic, which is a dialect of Aramaic, 
is living water. And so they're even using some of the same terminology that one encounters in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are just so many interesting points of intersection and yet distinctiveness that uh, we really need to talk about them in relation to others, probably because, let's face it, the others that were their neighbors in that region throughout most of their history are more familiar to most of your listeners mm -hmm. than the Mandaeans themselves mm -hmm. are. Sure. All right, so yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about, uh, let's start with Judaism and, and the, I think the, some of the baptizing elements uh, might stem from, from Judaism. Can you talk a little bit about how that, uh, how that tradition, how those traditions intersect? Yeah, the, the question of Mandaism's connection with Judaism is a, a fascinating one because one of the questions that scholars of Gnosticism wrestle with is, where does Gnosticism come from? Mm -hmm. And one of the key defining features that distinguishes Gnosticism in the strict sense from other kinds of esotericism, other kinds of mysticism that we find in conversation with Gnostics and close at hand to Gnostics, is this belief that the creator god of the Jewish scriptures is a malevolent figure mm -hmm. and is this demiurge who brought the material world into existence and out from under whose influence one wants to escape. And we find that in Mandaism and one thing that's distinctive of Mandaism is that the terms that are used for the key uh, the, for the key um, malevolent figures that rule over the material world are Adonai which of course will be recognizable to a lot of people as basically a transliteration of the Hebrew word for Lord or the word that's used for Yahweh, mm -hmm. and Ruha, sometimes called actually Ruha de Kudasha, so Holy Spirit, although the term that is translated holy in other traditions is kind of inverted or used subversively in Mandaism, mm. and so I've even seen some translations where they basically call her the infernal spirit, even though the word is basically the exact same phrase you find in um, Babylonian Jewish Aramaic or in Syriac, referring to the Holy Spirit. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah, the Gnostics do have a tendency to uh, flip the original meanings of the scriptures. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Ch oh, James, uh, so just following on your question and its relation to the, the Jewish tradition, so you just, you mentioned that the, the, the Jewish, the Hebrew, the Old Testament term that uh, that's translated for spirit is kind of reinterpreted to be a, a bad thing, uh, a negative entity in uh, in Mandaism, and then one of the main titles for God, Lord, is 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 the negative demiurge. What do the uh, Mandaeans think of Jesus? Kind of talking about their their connections to Christianity, and what, what do they think of the major figure of uh, of that religion? Uh, I guess the short answer is that they're not really fans. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they have a, a negative view of Jesus that compares to their negative view of the Jewish creator God and mm. the spirit. Uh, Jesus is viewed as an apostate Mandean. Uh, he also g takes the blame for some later developments, um, basically Byzantine Christianity, uh, the practice of celibacy among monks and nuns and things of that sort. Uh, whether it's fair to blame Jesus for those things or not is a different <laughs> question but he gets the blame in some Mandian texts. But he's viewed as uh, essentially an apostate from Mandaism, somebody who was connected with John the Baptist, but essentially betrayed the trust and went and did his own thing, which involves, among other things, baptism in non-living water, not running water, and so a different kind of baptism. Mm. And so the Mandaeans have their own version of some stories that we also find in the New Testament and some of the ones connected with John the Baptist and his parents are interesting both in that they intersect with let's say the Lucan infancy story but also have some distinctives and go in a completely different direction that makes you wonder did they have their own separate tradition and how, if so for how long but when it comes to Jesus the stories become more recognizable uh, for those familiar with the New Testament. And, for instance, one famous story in the Mandean Book of John, uh, which, of course, is John the Baptist. It's not like their mm -hmm. Gospel of John. Uh, but one story in there tells of the baptism of Jesus, 
And Jesus essentially pleads with John to baptize him and promises a number of things, including that if he baptizes him and makes him his disciple, uh, Jesus promises to mention John in his book, which is a fun <laughs> little uh, twist there. And John is hesitant not because he feels he needs to be baptized by Jesus, but precisely because he doesn't trust Jesus and thinks he's up to no good and this, this can't lead anywhere good if he baptizes him. And so eventually a letter comes from the light world, the world above, which is the Mandean equivalent of the heavenly voice you get in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And it basically says, not this is my beloved son, but you know, John, go ahead and baptize the deceiver. Right? You're not accountable for whatever follows. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, so uh, Jesus wasn't the uh, wasn't the main guy in Mandaism. So uh, John the Baptist is. Can you tell us about the figure of John the Baptist in Mandaism and the role he plays? Sure. And just just to clarify, because there is a long history of thinking of the Mandaeans as disciples of John the Baptist, and they have sometimes been happy to uh, go along with that. Uh, but John the Baptist isn't really viewed as their founder, mm. and that's an important point to make. Okay. Uh, like other Gnostic traditions, they view their religion as the oldest in the world. It goes back to Adam and Seth and you know, these figures from time immemorial. And that actually leads to an interesting possibility in terms of the meaning of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mandeans are uh, also known as baptizers. In fact, one of the words that they're known by, uh, the term Sabians, that occurs in the Quran, probably stems from an Arabic root that means baptizers. And so, when they called John, John the Baptist, we tend to think, we tend to assume, rather, that what they meant was that he was John and he was doing this distinctive baptism thing that other people weren't doing. But another possible meaning is that it meant John, who is a famous instance of this wider baptizing movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that's what the phrase meant in the sources, then uh, that would match up well with the role he has in Mandaism, which is that he's pr arguably our most famous Mandaean, but he's just one, and he's not the starter of the movement. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, is the uh, the celebrity Mandaean who... <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, I'm just, uh, let's talk oh, about, have, okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, we're, we're, we're getting close to the end, right, uh, for the video show? Yeah, we've got a few more minutes. Okay, just, uh, just one point I wanted to make sure that we hit, that we'll, we'll come back to, uh, for sure during the podcast, but, uh, James, um, as we've already said a number of times, the Mandaeans are, are a, a living religion, uh, a living tradition. Um, and as far as I understand, they, they don't marry outside of their tradition. They have uh, distinctive um, cultural practices and a distinctive language. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about their political and social situation right now, because uh, you know you said a lot of them are based around what was Mesopotamia. That's not a, an area of the world where a lot of good things are happening. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the what, what Mandaeans are going through right now. Absolutely. and. Even though they seem to be mentioned in the Quran as people of the book, uh, because others also tried to lay claim to this vague third category of Sabians, um, including some uh, star worshippers who basically were polytheists in Haran, and so the lack of clarity about who exactly the Sabians were and whether it referred to the Mandians has left their status as a protected people in predominantly Islamic societies uh, in jeopardy, shall we say. And so they've faced a fair amount of persecution. Uh, they certainly have been one of the minority groups that has faced intense persecution in recent years. Uh, for some reason, the Yazidi have been mentioned more often in the news than the Mandeans have, but uh, the Mandeans have been persecuted by groups like ISIS in the present day. But they've had a kind of awkward unclear, ambiguous status for a very long time. And as a result, there have been moves to create a diaspora in other countries. And so nowadays you can find Mandians um, in lots of parts of the United States, um, in the UK, in Australia, in Sweden, in uh, the Netherlands. And 
they're surviving, they're integrating, but one major challenge they're facing is that their distinctive tradition, which has managed to survive for more than a thousand years, is in danger of being lost mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. One is that they're simply such a small group, and sometimes they're without a priest, and the priest is the guardian of the esoteric tradition, the one who officiates over the baptismal rituals. And so without a priest, you don't have the teaching or the practice being passed on. But also in terms of trying to pass the tradition on to the next generation, there haven't been English language translations of Mandean texts. There haven't been translations into most other languages of Mandean texts. And that's a problem, right? If you imagine people trying to pass on Judaism or Christianity and you have no Torah, you have no Bible in whatever the language is that the children are growing up speaking, then a major part of the heritage will not get passed on to them. The other thing you mentioned was um, about uh, marrying outside the faith, which Mandeans do do sometimes, but they don't accept converts. And so if you marry outside of the faith, then for Mandeans who preserve that tradition of not accepting converts, the tradition ends with you. Right? So it stops with you, doesn't get passed on to your children. And so there's one less Mandean family because of that. Mm. And that's it's interesting. And I, I get the sense that at least some Mandeans are open to revisiting that. And there are some resources in their sacred texts that would help them with doing so because uh, it seems clear that there was a time when Mandeans did accept converts. And so it seems to me as a scholar that probably the not accepting of converts was a response to Islamic law about what happens if someone converts to your religion from Islam mm. and the likely persecution or increased negative attention that would bring to your community when that happened. Interesting. All right. Well, that was uh, that was a very interesting uh, last little bit there, and, and I think that we'll probably have a little bit more to talk about uh, in that regard when we switch over to the podcast. But we are about out of time for the video show, so uh, don't worry. We'll have more to talk about on this uh, coming up in a few days when we release the podcast. Uh, but in the meantime, Dr. McGrath, do you have any uh, any places you'd like people to go if they want to find out more about you and your work on the internet? Uh, well, you can certainly visit my blog. I don't spend most of my time talking about the Mandeans, but obviously you can do a keyword search. Uh, my blog is Exploring Our Matrix, and that'll let you know one of my other interests. Um, mm -hmm. In addition to biblical studies and the Mandeans, I also have a, a big interest in science fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can find some resources connected with uh, Mandean text translation project I've been involved in online. And so if you do a Google search for Mandean Book of John, uh, you will find a draft of some uh, translation work that's been going on. All right, fantastic. We'll put those links in the description also for uh, people looking for that stuff. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, so then let's, uh, let's wrap things up there. Uh, I don't have any news, do you, Jonathan? Uh, no, no news. Um, and no news is good for, news, as they say. No. No news, good news. Plug for the upcoming conclave yep. with special guest Karen King. That's right. So if you are uh, at all interested, if you've sat through this entire uh, 15 minutes and you want to have more geeky religious conversations, then join us in, uh, in Salem, Massachusetts in May and uh, check out joeandite.org slash conclave2016 for more information. All right, so uh, thank you once again, James, for joining us on this uh, program. We were delighted to have you and, and learn so much from you. Pleasure to be here. All right, and so for everybody who is watching along at home, we will see you next week. This has been a production of the Gnostic Wisdom Network. For more information about this and all of GWN's programming, please visit GnosticWisdom.net. The opinions expressed in this show do not necessarily reflect the opinions of GWN, the Apostolic Joannite Church, or any other organization. This has been released under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License and is brought to you by the generous support of our patrons. To support our programs and become a patron, please visit patreon.com slash gnostic. 
That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash G-N-O-S-T-I-C. 